Hi, this is Dr. Tony Cooper, and this is Life Without Baggage. In this podcast, I'll help you develop a stronger sense of self, develop firmer boundaries, and also learn how to lean into the gentle promptings of the Holy Spirit who can help you navigate life. I have dozens of bonus videos posted that will help you in these areas and also will help you develop stronger coping skills. In each of the program notes, there's a link where you can request a free digital book, Understanding Your Dreams, where you can find my other media and also where you can find my books on Amazon. Just a reminder before we get into today's episode that this is not a substitute for medication or counseling. If you're having thoughts of harming yourself or another person, or if this material triggers you, please contact your doctor or a mental health specialist to help you with your concerns. Now here's today's episode. Continuing in the series on greater emotional peace and freedom, I interviewed Rebecca Ann Perkins to talk about emotional intelligence. So in part one this week, we're going to be looking at what emotional intelligence is, why we need it, and how it influences our ability to cope and have healthy relationships. So here's part one. (laughs) Welcome to this week's episode of Life Without Baggage. I have a guest today, Rebecca Ann Perkins. And let me read her bio. Rebecca Ann Perkins is a national speaker. She's been speaking to audiences for 15 years. She's also a life coach. Her mission is to inspire, educate, and empower Christians to grow personally and in their faith through biblically-based content, coaching, and resources. She has a master's degree in human services and over 3,000 hours working with people one-on-one. She is the host of the podcast, Truth Applied. You listened to her interview of me a few weeks ago. And she's also the founder of Juniper Christian Mentoring. Her podcast helps people move from information into learning how to apply the Bible to live in a more free and be, uh, that goes with kind of my thing, being fully alive. So welcome, Rebecca. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here. Thanks for being on my show recently. Now it's my turn to be on yours. (laughs) That's right. I get to pick your brain and you do all the work. (laughs) So we're going to talk about emotional intelligence. This is a topic that um, Rebecca speaks about frequently. So uh, why don't you fill us in? What is emotional intelligence? Yeah, one of my favorite topics. Um, Actually did most of my master's work on this topic Mm. before it was real trendy. I think, I feel like it's more trendy now. There's more Mm -hmm. books about it. It's kind of being used in the corporate world and things like that. But, um, in essence, it's the, you'll find a lot of different definitions if you Google it, but really it's the ability to handle your emotions wisely, which perceive them, understand them, manage them, um, and handle them in a way that's the most helpful, most useful. And it is a set of abilities, meaning it can be learned. It can't, we can grow in it. It's not some kind of fixed thing that you're either born with or you're not born with, which that's great news for people. (laughs) Right. If if you, if your family didn't give you a bunch of it, it's not too late. Right. And that's the other, you know, kind of foundational point is that our emotional intelligence, sometimes called EQ, like IQ, um, is really set by our our home, um, our place of where we were raised. We'll usually have the same EQ that our parents had or the environment that we grew up in until we decide to put a little bit of work into it. And then it can it can, you know, increase rapidly. Okay, so why do people need emotional intelligence? That might be a no-brainer, but maybe it's not obvious. Yeah, I don't think it is obvious because some people think that emotions aren't important or that they can just stuff them or that emotions are weakness, which which actually those those thought processes aren't aren't true, you know, and and they don't <laughs> they're not helpful in the long run. Um we need emotional intelligence because our emotions are very real. They don't just go away. We all have them. 
God actually gave them to us as a gift to connect to him and to connect to other people, to connect to life in general, right? I mean, when we're connected to our feelings, we feel more alive. We feel Mm -hmm. more in touch with other people and more in touch with God. So emotions are a God-given gift. And like everything, we have to learn how to handle them. They, we right. can, they can get out of control and we can handle them in sinful ways that hurt other people, or um, we can stuff them in ways that make us feel really disconnected from life and God and ourself and all that. So, yeah, I mean, really emotions are our gift and, and yet we're, we're, we have to learn how to, um, how to handle them. It, if we weren't taught well it can feel like a real mystery to some people at the beginning Mm -hmm. of of really working on it. Mm -hmm. I found too that um, even in work settings or other situations where you need to be able to understand what the other person is talking about or what it is they need or why there seems to be some kind of disconnect that if we have emotional intelligence we also will read others more accurately. Oh, yeah. I mean, one of the facets of emotional intelligence is not only understanding your own feelings, but being able to understand what other people are feeling, you know, Mm -hmm. being able to sense what somebody else is going through. Um, And then in general, people with a higher emotional intelligence, yeah, they, they it kind of across the board are proven to have healthier relationships. They're People who test at a high EQ actually, on average, make about $30,000 more a year in their jobs than people who have a low EQ. That's normally because high EQ gets you promoted. It, it, it makes you good with people. It gets you into management positions and things like that. Um, highest uh, sort of satisfaction in interpersonal relationships. So there, the benefits of having a high EQ are, you know, Every every facet of your life is positively impacted, really. Absolutely. It seems, too, that, um, you know, when we you think about how well you get along with your partner, some of it is whether you can see what they're getting at. Even if you don't agree with them, at least if you can get the idea of, oh, this is what they mean, yeah. you know, it, it makes it easier when stuff comes up, if it's not just the assumption that, well, they're selfish or they're stupid. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Oh, right. Yeah. I mean, being able to have the empathy to say, this is that person's reality right now or their perception. It it might not be true. (laughs) Their perception of me or the situation might not be accurate, but I, I can tap into the fact that it feels really true to them or it feels real to them right now. Mm -hmm. So yes, being able to tap into your own feelings and kind of tap into what somebody else is feeling makes that empathy, the sympathy, the grace, it makes the communication usually much calmer yeah, (laughs) and much easier Mm -hmm. um, and much more respectful. Yeah. Yeah. Without giving up your own position or your own thoughts just to see, oh, that's why they think that. Right. And maybe it has nothing to do with you. It it seems as though women often think mm-hmm. any kind of attitude that's a little off in their partner must be their their fault or it's about them. And it's like a lot of times it isn't. No. Yeah. Most of the time it isn't. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's helpful if we don't automatically go there. Oh, yeah. Really helpful. That can be very frustrating to a partner if you do automatically go there. Because they might just be having a bad day, you know. So what are some things that you uh, work with, with your clients or when you're speaking? What are some of the things that you talk about to help people recognize where they are in their own emotional intelligence and what kinds of options they have to grow? I mean, there are tests online. You can literally go take an emotional intelligence test. The free ones aren't that good, but you can find some that are, you know, $12 or something from reputable sites. Mm -hmm. And they they do a very good job. You know, they ask you questions like, is it easy for you to articulate yourself when you're angry? You know, if if somebody says no to that and, and questions similar to that, it could mean you have a low EQ and then you know where you need to start working. 
it you might have a high one. I mean, a, a lot of people have a high one if they were raised in a house that, um, you know, didn't ignore emotions, didn't make you feel like a baby if you cried or emotions are not important, that if they were validated in a healthy way, but also, you know, then you bring your brain into it and you say, well, you know, is that is that true that just because you didn't make the soccer team or whatever that you're totally worthless? You know, this is a way that a mom could talk to a 10 year old daughter who doesn't make a soccer team or whatever. Um, so you, you could have a high one and you and you don't really know it necessarily because this is a new term to you or you've never taken a test or whatever. But um, I would recommend I mean, I do recommend that, that people find a, a good test and take one just to kind of see where they're at. Um, but other than that, if you don't want to go take a test, yeah, I mean, a, a quick, quick, um, thing that I always do with people when I start is I ask people, are you a stuffer or a surfer? <laughs> mm -hmm. Why don't you explain um, those terms? I like those. Uh, I like that way of looking at it. Yeah. So a surfer would be somebody who, when they feel a big feeling, you know, you get angry or you feel sad and you're having an emotional reaction in your body, you really surf that emotion. You vent it, you maybe say things you regret or do things you regret, or you go shop a bunch, or you go, you, you act out of the emotion instead of knowing how to manage it. Okay, so it overwhelms you. Yeah, it overwhelms you and you've never really learned how to regulate or self-regulate. And so you are you are given an example that people just blow up or people just act out because emotions are too big. They're too scary. We don't have any self-control. That would be a surfer. Okay. A stuffer would be somebody who is on the total opposite end of the spectrum. You have an emotion well up because we all do, right? They're physical reactions and you choke it down. Um, you swallow it and you literally make a conscious decision to not think about it, not go there. Um, and then you numb out the, the, those types of people who say, I'm not going to think about the fact that, you know, my husband and I haven't communicated well in two years. <laughs> that feels overwhelming to me. So I'm just going to swallow that feeling of rejection for the hundredth time. And I'm going to go play on my phone for three hours and drink some wine. That's, that's a, a stuffer. Mm -hmm. So generally speaking, the person has some brief awareness of the emotion and they feel like they don't know what to do with it. So they're just going to stuff it. Mm -hmm. And we talked last time too, about how some people devalue their emotions for various reasons. It's the end of part one of my interview. Tune in next week when we're going to be talking more about emotional intelligence and how to manage emotion. So this is Dr. Tony Cooper, and this is Life Without Baggage. Thanks for listening. And if this helped you, share it with a friend. Talk to you next time.